it's even, if it's no. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about, for example, a function like x cubed, and here a function like x to the fourth, or let's say f of x equals x to the fifth plus 2x plus 1. All these have odd degree, let's say here, let's x to the sixth plus 2x plus 1. So these are even degree. This is degree 4, this one has degree 6, this one has degree 3, and this one has degree 5. The reason why I separate them into two categories is there is one specific item that is very similar to the linear function, odd degree, simplest possible odd degree linear, and to the quadratic function, which is the simplest possible even degree. So do we remember the two options for the linear function? Either going from negative infinity to positive infinity with a positive leading coefficient. Or what is the second option for the linear function? You mean positive infinity to negative infinity. We go from left to right. Perfect. Great. So all odd degree polynomial function, any degree, 3, 5, 7, they will behave either like this with a positive leading coefficient or like this with a negative leading coefficient. So that's a huge step forward in understanding these functions. What do you think we're going to compare this to? Yes, I'm sure I already said that. So we're going to compare it with the quadratic function with a negative leading coefficient and the quadratic function with a positive leading coefficient. The, ne the negative leading coefficient, the function starts at negative infinity, turns and comes back to negative infinity. And with a positive leading coefficient, and we graph this sufficiently enough in transformations to remember what this is. Opening up, coming from positive infinity, going to back, back to positive infinity. And now you're probably wondering, what is all this discussion about? It's one of the items that we have to determine when we graph polynomial, polynomial functions, degree 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. It's just one item. I'll get to it in a minute. OK, so here's the list. Uh, let's choose a polynomial, either degree 3 or 4 at the beginning. You tell me which one would you prefer. Degree 3, degree 4. We want to start with degree 4. That's fine. Which means we picked from this category now. Very good. So let's say x to the 4th plus uh, 3x cubed. We are asked to graph this function. Why do we always graph functions? What is the point? The point is to understand what it's doing where it's coming from, to understand the trend, and maybe use it in word problems. OK, so there is a long list of items that we need to present and determine when graphing a polynomial function degree 4. Number one, this is the list. It doesn't necessarily mean that this is the correct order, or there is any correct order. But however, I will always, will always start with the domain. You choose the order from the domain on. It doesn't matter, really, as long as you determine all of them. And on, on the test, I will specifically indicate, please determine blah, 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 blah. So you will not have to memorize this. If you graph three or four functions, you will know what you need to do. You will not need that, but I will put it in writing for you. So domain number two, x intercepts. There is something now that we haven't talked about. So this is one new piece of information. And there, multiplicities. X-intercepts and their multiplicities. We have not talked about that. That will be the starting point. Y-intercept. Of course, that is always required. Now, 
Number four, degree and max possible number of turns. Let's stop for a moment. What does a turn mean? I'm driving on 95, I-95, I'm going north. And you call me and you say, you forgot something. I'm going to turn, which means that's a maximum or maybe a minimum, right? So turns are max min. That's what they mean. Turns. Five, end behavior. We have not talked about it. Actually, you could say, yes, you, you already have. And here it is. That's the item I, I started with. This is what we call end behavior. The end behavior for this function is negative infinity to positive infinity. The end behavior for this function is negative infinity to negative infinity. The end behavior for this one is positive to positive. In other words, what happens when x increases without bound or decreases without bound? That's the end behavior. Number six, max min with a calculator. In this class, we cannot determine them by hand. We have to use the calculator. Seven, symmetry. And we know we have functions have two possibilities or none of the above. F of negative x to b and f of negative x to b. Can anyone refresh our memory on which one is which? If f of negative x equals f of x, the function is even, which means symmetric with respect to the y-axis is very good. There is no symmetric with respect to the x-axis, there will not be a function. If it's like this, you cross it with a vertical line test, it's not a function. Very good. And the other possibility is f of negative x to b. Very good. Negative f of x, the function would be odd, which means symmetric with respect to origin. Any questions? Potentially, we can determine the range. Okay, so I'm going to copy the function one more time. We picked f of x equals x to the fourth plus 3x cubed. And we will summarize all the information in the table, as we always do. So we don't have to look at five different pages, but everything is summarized in one spot. Okay, so can anyone give us the um, domain of this function? Is there any danger? What will be the domain of this function? What are the x values that you can plug in and still get a y value? All of them. All of them. There is no restriction on polynomial functions. Polynomial functions are defined everywhere. You can plug in that expression any x you want, and you will always find the y value. So domain of polynomial functions, write it down if you forgot, uh, please. Um, domain of all polynomial functions is all real numbers. There are no restrictions. There is no division by x. There is no square root. There is absolutely no danger. Perfect. So um, I'm going to go through the list. Uh, again, it's not, it may or may not be in the same order. So the domain is done. I would like to determine the x-intercepts and explain multiplicities. How do we determine the x-intercepts for this function? What do we need to do? The x-intercepts. How do we determine the x-intercepts? One more time. Four. 
that will be the y-intercept. x equals 0 is a vertical line. y equals 0, very good. So then x to the fourth plus 3x cubed equals 0. What is the degree of this polynomial? I should have asked right here. What is the degree? Very good. So remember we said degree and maximum possible number of turns. That is always one less than the degree. Max possible number of turns equals degree minus one in our case is three. What does this mean one more time? It's the maximum possible number of turns, which means the function doesn't have to turn at all. It's a fourth degree. It has to turn at least one, once. But it doesn't have to turn three times. But it cannot turn more than three times. That's all it means. Maximum possible number of turns. Three. Okay. Okay. So um, how many solutions, how many zeros or x-intercepts will I find? Absolutely four. The degree is four. I have to find four solutions. How will I solve this equation? What will be the first step? We solved them a month ago and a half ago for this. What do I do? It is set equal to zero because y equals zero. It's already set equal to zero. How do I solve it? What will be the first step? Anyone? Say it again. I'm solving the equation. I cannot plug in numbers. Yes, we factor out x to the third. Very good. What is left in parentheses? Very good. Awesome. I'm going to copy the equation because I ran out of room. <laughs> My apologies. So we have x cubed and x plus 3 equals 0. And again, how many solutions do we have to find? Four. Very good. So please give me four solutions. Can anyone give us four solutions? Say it again. <laughs> so, can anyone solve this equation for us and give give us four solutions? It's in your notes. We've done this a long time ago. Yes? Yes, x equals zero. x equals negative 3, x equals 0, x equals 0. That is the multiplicity what? How many times that does x equals 0, this particular solution, appear as a solution? How many times? Very good. Very good. Awesome. That's multiplicity 3. How many times does x equals negative 3 appear as, as an x-intercept? Very good. Multiplicity 1. 3 plus 1 has to equal the degree. Is that true? Okay. Now let's analyze what happens here. So I can check the x-intercepts x and, the, and their multiplicities. So that's checked. Okay. So I can put them in my table. I have 0 and 0, and I have uh, negative 3 and 0. So that is done. <coughs> But let's analyze what happens when the multiplicity is odd and multiplicity is even. A third use of the odd word at even. Okay? Odd and even for degree, odd and even for functions, symmetric. And now odd multiplicity and even multiplicity. Totally different. Plicity, even, multiplicity. So let me summarize what we're trying to do. We're trying to graph this polynomial function. And the first function will always, like any new material, requires a lot of work and a lot of words and a lot of understanding and talking about it. But the second problem, the third problem, will take us under three minutes. But this one I have to explain a lot. Here is the possibility, or here is when a solution, an x-intercept, appears once or three times 
or five times, or so on and so forth. So this, it's a straight cross. They're all crosses. The function will cross there. Here is multiplicity 1. Here is multiplicity 3. When we graphed x cubed, I said to you, make sure you graph it so that it's not a straight cross. This is multiplicity 3. And here will be multiplicity 5. It does not mean that the, the uh, function crosses there five times. No. It only means that it takes a long time till it finally crosses and a long, a long time to move away from the x-axis. That's all it means. There is still only one solution here. There is still only one solution here. And there is still one solution here. But it takes much longer for the function to cross the x-axis. The even multiplicity is always a turn. Always. This is a regular turn, like for x squared, multiplicity 2. And this, it takes its time. Multiplicity 4. See the difference? One is flatter than the other. This one, it's kind of in a rush. This one takes its time. So going back to our multiplicities, since it's an odd multiplicity, since it's an odd multiplicity, both of them will be crosses. Odd multiplicities, both, 1 and 3, 1 and 3, they will all cross, both cross. So I'm going to write cross. <laughs> cross. This one, it's a regular cross, but this one is slow. At 0, 0, it's a slow cross. Okay, let's talk about the y-intercept now. How do I determine the y-intercept for any function? Yes. So I have to find f of 0, but it turns out to be 0. So this is the x-intercept and also the y-intercept, 0 comma 0. Let's talk about max min. I can't with the calculator. Symmetry, we'll discuss it in a second. But I'm interested now in the end behavior. Which category, again, does this function belong to? The one on the left or the one on the right? The one on the right. What is its leading coefficient? Because if you say the leading coefficient is negative, then the end behavior will be negative infinity to negative infinity. If you say the leading coefficient is positive, then the end behavior will be positive infinity back to positive infinity. So let's look at the function. It's in descending order. I can easily identify the leading coefficient. Is it positive or is it negative? Positive. positive. So this is the end behavior. All I have to do is copy it in my table. And that's it. That's the end behavior. I go back. I check that. So all I have to do is the max min with the calculator when we come up with our graph. And then the symmetry. So let's finish up the symmetry. And then we are ready to graph this function. So we have f of x was x to the fourth plus 3x cubed. We know that f of negative x will be x to the fourth minus 3x cubed, which does not equal negative f of x, because both will have negative, does not equal f of x, because they will have to be the same. So it's none of the above. The function is not symmetric. This is what we did in chapter 2 a long time ago. So now, all I need to graph this function is this little table. You can say, and I will have to agree with you, I need more points. I need to uh, use negative 4, I need to use negative 2, I need to use 1 and 4 and 5 and so on and so forth. Yes, you can. I don't recommend it. There is no need. Let me show you why there is no need. So let's attempt to this graph. I only care about my table. Here it is. Here's the table. Here's the coordinate system. Of course, I have to plot the points I have, and they are negative 3, 0, and 0, 0. 
And now you could say, okay, wait a minute, how are you going to graph this? So please follow me. I know it looks gibberish, it looks very difficult, it's really not. So if you pay attention for one second. It comes from positive infinity, it has to cross at negative 3, 0, that's why my, my note says comes from positive infinity crossing at negative 3, 0. It has to turn, because now it comes back to the origin and turns again. Right? So, from positive infinity, crossing, going, um, I'm sorry, it crosses again. So, from positive infinity, crossing at negative 3, 0, it has to turn, because slowly, slowly, it crosses at 0, 0, going to infinity. That's all this says. So, coming from positive infinity, crossing at negative 3, 0, it has to turn, because now it's crossing at zero, but very slowly, not like this. Slow cross like this and going to infinity. This is our function f of x equals x to the fourth plus 3x cubed. The only thing I don't know here is this. That I don't know. And I have no tools in this class. Unfortunately, we have no chance of determining this by hand. You have to take calculus in order to determine it by hand. So, in y equals, we put in x to the fourth, and then plus 3x cubed, and then we go to, I know that the action, I, know, <coughs> I already have a little cheat sheet here, but I don't care for it because it's lying to me, and we know it's lying. So I, we already graphed. I know that we, the entire action happens between negative 3 and 0, so I'm going to change the viewing window between negative 5 and 4 with a scale of 1, and y minimum between negative 4 or negative 6. I have my cheat sheet. I'm sorry, you probably don't have that. So between negative 6 and 4 to have a better graph. Let's see. It's crossing a negative. Oh, I, I went to, um, sorry about that. Let me adjust a little bit. The y minimum. I have to adjust the y minimum. I guess negative 10 is fine because it, it appeared already. So we know that it's crossing a negative 3, 0. It's coming to a minimum. It has to cross very slowly, not like that, because there are three solutions, x equals 0, and going to infinity. The only thing I can determine by hand in this class is this minimum between negative 3 and 0. So second and calc, we choose minimum, which is 3, between negative 3 and 0. Enter, enter, and just give me, I don't want to guess. So the minimum is, and I'll put it in my table as well as in my graph is the point is negative 2.25 comma negative 8.54. The reason why I said that we can kind of find a range is because I truncated this number. This is not the exact number, right? So the range will be between this and infinity. That's why I said kind of. So I will also put it in the table at negative 2.25, negative 8.54. Yes, you can find any number of ordered pairs you want. If you understand this, this uh, graph and the next one, you will have zero difficulties with these functions. And then we can look at a word problem. So uh, this was an even degree. As you see, the end behavior because the leading coefficient is positive, positive to positive. I'll let you choose another one, any <coughs> function you would like. This was an even degree. Problems are on page. Let me give them to you. Let me tell you where they are. So they are on page uh, 378. From 41 to 64, 378, choose any degree you like.
I think because we looked at an even degree, I think we should choose an odd degree and then move on to something else. If you don't choose, I will. Yes? You want me to choose? Or you want to choose? Which one? 62. 62. Uh, it's still an even degree. So it's x cubed, then x squared, and then x. So degree is 6. So, yeah, so uh, 2, 2, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 2, uh, 2, 2. We can just uh, add something in or, or take something out. So we want an odd degree. Um, I can make one up. So here it is. x to the fifth plus 2x cubed plus 2x squared. I want, I also want to show then even uh, multiplicity. So um, if we put, let me just um, come up with one already factored. That's even better. So let's say um, negative 2 x plus 1 squared x minus 2 to the third power. It's already factored. We don't have to factor it. I don't have to think too hard. Okay. So negative 2 x plus 1 squared and if we want them to be a little bit more separated we can just put a negative uh, 4 or 2 is it's still it's on the other side anyway. It's fine. That's Everything is good. Okay. So we start immediately immediately with a table. Every time we find something we discover something, we put it immediately in the table. So let's do that. Domain, please. So this time around, the problem should take us three minutes. Perfect. It's a polynomial function. It's defined everywhere, no restrictions whatsoever. Can anyone identify the degree of this polynomial? So x squared is 2 and x cubed is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, so degree is 5. What is the maximum possible number of turns? Four turns, four max possible. It doesn't have to turn four times, but it cannot turn more than four. Very good. Okay, so um, can anyone plug in zero so we find the x-intercept? <coughs> Let's do this together. How much is 0 plus 1? One? 1. 1 squared. That's it. That's gone. How much is 1 minus 2? I'm sorry. 0 minus 2. Negative two. Perfect. Negative 2 cubed. Eight. Negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 2. That's it. That will be the x-intercept and it's done. The y-intercept and it's done. So that was 16. 0 comma 16. How do I find the x-intercepts now? I said y equal to 0. Great job. So negative 2 x plus 1 squared x minus 2 cubed equals 0. How many solutions will you find? Indeed. If the degree is 5, we have to find 5 solutions. Excellent. So can anyone give us 5 solutions and their multiplicities? How many times? Very good. So x equals negative 1 multiplicity 2. Does that mean a turn or a cross? Very good. It's an even multiplicity. It must be a turn. Great. Then x equals 2 multiplicity. Very good. They have to add up to 5. And what type of, um, yes, what type? Slow. Not a regular cross, but it's a slow cross. Very good. So let's put it in the table. So we have negative 1 and 2. Negative 1, 0, 2, 0. At negative 1, I'm going to write myself a note. Don't forget to turn. At uh, x equals 2, I'm going to write a note. 
Don't forget to cross, but slow. Final step, the end behavior. What is the leading coefficient of this polynomial? Positive or negative? Negative. negative. So we compare it to the linear function, not to the quadratic function, because the degree is odd. So is it this, or is it this? Exactly, from positive to negative, a negative leading coefficient. Great job. It's done. That's all we need. About symmetry, a function that turns a negative 1 and crosses a 2 cannot be symmetric, but I still have to write it quickly. I write that f of negative x is definitely not f of x, and it's definitely not f of negative x, not symmetric. Because the problem will ask me to, to address symmetry. I think we're under three minutes with this problem. I'm not racing. I just, I'm just saying the first one took a long time because I needed to explain multiplicities and behavior. Okay, like before, I don't care about anything else. Just the table. So let's see what the table is saying. The function is coming. Let me uh, put the points that we have. We have negative 1, 0. I'm going to say 4, 8, 12, 16. Oh, oh it's positive, sorry. Uh, 4, 4, 8, 12, 16. It's positive. <laughs> and uh, 2, comma 0. Because I didn't want to go too far. So I took a different unit on the y-axis than on the x-axis. <laughs> So let's see what the, what the table is telling us. It's coming from positive infinity, but it's turning at this point. From positive infinity, turning at this point, going somehow to cross the y-axis, coming back, crossing slowly, and going to negative infinity. One more time. From positive infinity, turning, somehow crossing here, maybe this way, maybe this way. I'm, I'm unlikely, maybe this way, possible. And here it's coming and crossing very slowly, going towards negative infinity. So there are several options here. So it's coming from positive infinity and turning. I think this is going to be the case. The reason why I think that is because <coughs> these functions are smooth, continuous functions. If you twist your uh, wrist to graph them, Possible, most probably um, wrong. So I think that this is the case. It turns, crosses, and turns again, of course. And now slowly, slowly crossing because there are three solutions over there. And this is the function f of x equals negative 2, x plus 1 squared, x minus 2 cubed. Can it, can it turn here? Unlikely, but it's possible. We'll check. You don't have to go back and adjust the graph. Just choose the one is correct. Can it do this? Unlikely, because I'm kind of, I feel that my hand will kind of twist its wrist, but it's possible. So it can turn up here and then cross. It can turn on at the uh, y, um, y intercept, unlikely, I think. And uh, the other option is this. We still have to determine the maximum, the local max. And now, the moment of truth, we can go in. I just made it up. I have no idea how the function um, will turn, if it will turn it on the x, y axis or not. So, but that's not important. We cannot determine that in this class. So uh, we had negative 2 in parentheses, x plus 1 squared. Be careful with that. And then the other one is x minus, x minus 2. And this is cubed. OK. I know that the action happens uh, above 16, not that much below the y-axis. So I'm going to, of course, immediately adjust the viewing window. Uh, I want negative 4 to positive 4 is fine. To the scale of 1 is fine. Y minimum, I don't care about y minimum because there is nothing happening there. And I have to go to at least, possibly, I'm not sure I see here, I'm going to guess 50 with a scale of 5. 
Again, you may not have this possibility, but you should just <coughs> um, give it a shot. So, great. Excellent. Okay. So let's see. I still want to see a little bit of that. Uh, let me go back. So, um, y minimum. Okay. I'm going to say negative 4 and graph it again. Okay. So it's coming as we expected. It turns at negative uh, 1. It crosses, it goes higher, it crosses at 16, it goes to a maximum, it comes back down to 2, because there are three solutions, x equals 2, slowly, slowly moving away from the x-axis towards negative infinity. So, nothing to adjust, you don't have to do anything, but of course we have to find this point. Everything else is perfect. So let's go back and find that point with second and max, second calc and maximum. And we know that the maximum is between 0 and 2. So I want the maximum, which is 4. I will give it 0 and 2. And I don't want anything. Just give me the maximum. The maximum is at point 2. And the height is above as expected, a little bit above 16. So the maximum is at point 2, comma, 16.8. For well, this function, it's much easier to find its range. Can anyone give us the range of this function? <coughs> uh, look at those arrows. Yes, Jordan? Anyone? Of course, everything. Everything. That's why it's so much easier. Yeah. So the range is negative infinity to infinity. Before you move on to something else, I'll ask you to uh, let me know how you feel about these functions and if we uh, would like to look at another problem of any kind, either odd or even degree. Your choice. Or we look at a word problem. Okay, let's take a look. During a diagnostic evaluation, a 33-year-old woman experienced a panic attack a few minutes after she had been re asked to relax her whole body. The graph shows the rapid increase in her heart rate uh, during the panic attack. As you see, uh, time in minutes, one minute after she was asked to relax, something increased, somehow increased her, her heart rate. Then it went down a little bit, eight minutes later, and then spiked to quite high between 110 and 120 and then it started going down. Let's see what they want. By the way, what type of function do you think this is? Is it linear? Is it <coughs> quadratic? Is it radical? Is it the absolute value? Say it again. But quadratic mean, means this. Oh, or this. So what do you think? I'm saying up and then down and then up and then down. So <coughs> what type of function could this be? It starts with a P. Ha? Polynomial. How many turns does it have? One, exactly. Two, three. So it goes up and then turns down, and then turns up, and then turns down. One, two, three. What degree polynomial do you think this could be? You could say it could be 15. Yeah, I would. I agree. But what is the lowest possible? Four, indeed, because it has one, two, three turns, plus one, degree four. Right? If it has three turns, can it have degree 10? Yes. But what is the smallest possibility? One more, if it has three turns. Agreed? Good. So let's see. Bless you. Let's see what they want. For which time periods during the diagnostic evaluation was the woman's heart rate increasing? Between 1 and 4, and between 8 and? Excellent. That's why you see we read from the x-axis. is the trend, not from which value till which value. Perfect. For which time periods during the diagnostic evaluation was her heart rate decreasing? Between 4 to 8 and between? 
10 to 12. Awesome. Do you all see that? Very good. Uh, part C, how many turning points? We already answered that. How many turning points? Very good. Suppose that a polynomial function is used to model this. What degree will that be? Right, the minimum. For the model in part D that we just discussed, should the leading coefficient of this polynomial function be positive or negative? So we are talking about degree 4, and there are only two possibilities, up, up, or down, down. Positive leading coefficient or negative leading coefficient? Negative leading coefficient. So it starts from negative infinity and goes back to negative infinity. Very good. Use the graph to estimate the woman's maximum heart rate during the first 12 minutes. The maximum heart rate was roughly 115. Very good. How many minutes later from the start of the test? 10. Very good. Use the graph to estimate the woman's minimum heart rate during the first 12 minutes. The minimum heart rate appears to be at at 8. No. When? At 8. And then how much? 65. Roughly 65. I agree. I agree. But see, for this particular situation, a quadratic function doesn't work. A linear function doesn't work to fit the data through the data, right? An absolute value doesn't work. A radical function doesn't work. A linear function, as I said, does not work. The only one that does is a fourth degree polynomial function, obviously with three terms, and with a negative leading coefficient. Any questions? So that's one of the reasons we look at these polynomial functions. Questions for me, please. Now it's up to you if you'd like me to, uh, if you'd like to choose another problem. Uh, any degree you want, or we move on. <coughs> any decision, anyone?